you're soil testing this fall, I'm going to challenge you. Look for a couple different measurements on our nutrient of the day, potassium, because parts per million alone only tells a portion of the story. Certainly you need to know how many parts per million you have in the soil with potassium because it's going to take a certain number of pounds per acre to raise a great crop. Okay, that makes complete sense. But in addition to that, we want you to look at the base saturation test. That's going to show you the ratio of potassium to a number of other nutrients in the soil, including calcium, magnesium, and hydrogen. So when we start looking at potassium in total, uh, we've got to have enough to raise that crop, right? But in addition to that, we want in the range of 4% to 8% base saturation K. So if you're having standability issues, if you're seeing potassium deficiency, if you're seeing in your tissue results, hey, my potassium is a little bit on the low side, that very well could have to do with the fact that your base saturation K levels are below 4%. And if you're taking late season plant tissue analysis and noticing, hey, my potassium levels have really dropped off, or as you're harvesting, you notice these standability issues, or like corn leaves towards the bottom of the plant where they're firing on the outside edges of the leaves, you know you've got a potassium issue. So if you're thinking, I have lots of pounds out here, how come it's not getting into my crop? Now it's time to plan your fertilizer out for next season. So a couple of things that you may consider doing. One, you've got a lot of area of soil out there that your crop has to explore. And many times your root system's only able to get to a small portion of that. You may consider banding your potassium and moving it closer to the row. Now that could be done a couple different ways. You could be doing it in a two by two, for example. You could put a little bit in furrow with something like SureK, uh, but you can't really put a whole lot of potassium in the furrow with most sources that are out there. So some guys will do this two by two type program and that can work fine. The other thing you may consider is banding some deep. On our farm, we'll often use strip till and place potassium down eight or 10 inches deep, right beneath where we're going to plant next year's corn or soybean crop. And right there, I might've caught you as well. You say, wait a minute, soybeans? I, I just, I'm gonna put it out in front of my corn. No, we fertilize both corn and soybeans, and we've seen potassium as another one of those nutrients that's had a huge impact on getting our soybean yields up. One of the things too is when you look at the source of potassium that you're getting, Darren mentioned SureK liquid, we like at least some amount of liquid every year in every crop because if you go dry potassium, sometimes it can take a long time for that dry potassium to break down, especially in areas of the country like we're in, where we have very inconsistent rainfall. Potassium certainly is one of the primary nutrients that you need, and your crop needs large quantities of potassium. When you're building your program for this coming season, look at the crop removal rates of potassium for the yield that you raised, but also look at what that stover needs. We talked about standability. It's critical to have lots of potassium available for our crop. If you've got potassium levels already up in that six to 8% base saturation for most crops, you're probably already there on medium to heavy soils. You got enough. It may be something else that's your yield limiting factor, but make sure that you're addressing potassium in your program. The number one thing we'll leave you with today is test for parts per million with potassium, but also get the base saturation test. We really want those numbers for K in the four to 8% range. And what we're finding for many of the very high yield farmers, those numbers are in the six to 8% range. Shoot for that and you should be looking at higher yields and better standability in the future. And if you wanna reach those high yields Brian's talking about, you have to stop our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to control it coming up next.